Good morning, friends, and welcome to Friday, March 25th. Bar Baker starts us off with, I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem Friday's devotion is found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Julia Seymour. Our scripture reading is Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silent, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, and my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me, and pres you preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with a bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In 12-step programs, the community rejoices over each sign of progress, no matter how small. One day of sobriety is better than no days. One week of acknowledging powerlessness is better than one day. The testimony of one who has tried and failed is as valuable as the one who carries a 25-year chip. Community solidarity is part of the program's success and the hope that it offers. One who asks for help will never walk alone. Outside the program, though, consequences and mistrust often remain, and those who had not struggled with addiction have not been in a relationship with someone who does usually misunderstand the steps and the process and the language. People who grapple with addiction have a story to tell about the relief of sobriety. They also need to confess their pain, their mistakes, their failures, and their history. 
In their grief, they talk more than most people are willing to listen. Confession, though, is a communal activity, and it takes strength and hope to tell someone else the truth about the past. If it is the safe for us to spirit, physically, spiritually, and psychologically to hear one another's burdening, unburdening, we should consider it a privilege to do so. Equipped by grace, we can listen with love and assure the other person of God's love and power for them and in them. If we are capable of hearing another's confession but refuse to do so, we become like the stubborn horses and mules of the psalm. We have rejected the opportunity to share another's burden. We have left them to carry on alone. Friends, there is great peace in confession and the assurance of God's pardon. Let us share that peace with one another. Let us pray. O God of love, I am willing, we are willing to be an instrument of your con consolation and mercy. Open our hearts to opportunities to listen to others and to assure them of your forgiveness. Amen. Our closing hymn is Amazing Grace, verse 3. Blessings to you all.